Hi there. One of the concepts that's become extremely important in financial economics in recent times is that of systemic risk. So let's take a look at the meaning of the concept and a couple of examples. So what is systemic risk? Systemic risk, as I said, became a really key concept during and after the global financial crisis. Systemic risk is the idea there's a possibility that one single event or cluster of events at a micro level, at the level, for example, of an individual bank or insurance company, could in theory lead to a domino effect, which could then trigger instability, collapse of an entire industry or perhaps even an economy. So this is sometimes known as the domino effect. Systemic risk is where the risk that was isolated in one area of the economy has a much wider consequence beyond that sector. And the global financial crisis, or GFC, illustrated how interconnected the financial world has become. So, for example, the classic example is the shock in the, the subprime mortgage markets in the United States had a huge effect on the financial stability and profitability of institutions and markets around the world, including, of course, in the UK. Since the financial crisis, there's been a rush by regulators to try and make the banking system in particular uh, more resilient, less vulnerable to economic shocks, and in particular to try to create uh, firewalls through regulation to prevent the damage that can come from systemic risk. So let's think about to the financial crisis of 2007 to 2009. What was essentially a, a, an oversupply of loans, over leveraging of loans in the US housing and mortgage market uh, triggered a much wider consequence. So eventually the housing and mortgage market in the United States went, went basically went bust, uh, the bubble burst, and that created a liquidity and a credit crunch in the banking system, which then spread to all the other credit and financial markets. So banks stopped lending to each other. Uh, there were runs on banks. The depositors were looking to take their money out and what have you. So the financial subprime market system in the States created a much wider financial panic. That then led to an economy-wide recession in the United States, which of course is the world's biggest economy. Uh, reverberations, the sort of systemic consequences of this obviously fell through in terms of a steep decline in global trade and investment triggered recession in many advanced economies, including the United Kingdom. That uh, brought about, of course, a banking crisis, which uh, in some cases was resolved by bailing out the banks, by nationalising them. Of course, in one case, uh, in Lehman Brothers, the Lehman Brothers were allowed to go bust. But the banking crisis led to recession. Recession leads to a sovereign debt crisis because government tax revenues fall and government welfare spending and bailout spending goes up. So the sovereign debt crisis leads to a big rise in national debt. Eventually, the recession bottomed out, but we've had nearly a decade where governments in many countries have been trying to deal with and adjust to a higher level of fiscal debt and uh, deficit and higher debts. And many countries have struggled to grow uh, as fast as they did before the bubble burst. So this, I hope, gives you an idea of systemic risk. Essentially, the subprime mortgage market in the States and bust and that had a huge wider effect not just in the United States not just in the United States but also across many countries in the developed advanced world and of course emerging countries as well we can see some of the impact of this on the the return the rate of return the profitability of UK commercial and investment banks so the blue shows the rate of return for commercial banks that obviously dropped very sharply in in 2008 to 2009, investment banks likewise, many operated both commercial banking and investment banking arms, so-called group banks, and they suffered heavy losses. Notice that since the crisis, the rate of return on, uh, on equity, essentially a measure of profit in banking, has been substantially lower than it was in the, in the years before. In part, because regulations have tightened up the ability of banks to, to lend out. So systemic risk is really important, and this has led to the emergence of, the introduction of micro and macro prudential policies. Here's a great quote from Andy Holden at the Bank of England. The financial crisis revealed that the safety of individual banks, micro, was neither a necessary nor sufficient condition for economic systemic stability. 
Not necessary because in any well-functioning system, individual banks can and should fail. Not sufficient because in an integrated, if you like, an interconnected web, the chain is only as strong as its weakest link. That, to my mind, gives you a brilliant quote on systemic risk. The chain is only as strong as its weakest link. And so regulators have stepped in. In the last 10 years, they've brought in much more regulation designed to make the financial system more stable and less prone to systemic risk. Micro prudential is the regulation of individual financial firms, payday lenders, commercial banks, hedge funds, insurance companies. Macro prudential tries to provide, through things like liquidity ratios and stress tests of the banking system as a whole, tries to safeguard the financial system in its widest sense to protect against what we've been discussing in this revision video, which is, of course, systemic risk. If you get a question on financial economics, systemic risk is a key, key, a key concept that you really will want to discuss. So I hope this, this uh, short revision video has been useful for you.